Well, here we go again with more warnings and alerts. Breaking, voting experts warn of serious threats for 2024 from election equipment software breaches. You guys ready for this? A group of nearly two dozen computer scientists, election security experts, and voter advocacy organizations have raised concerns about serious threats to the upcoming presidential election in 2024. They have sent a letter to U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland and other federal officials urging an investigation into the breaches of voting system software in several states. This effort was part of a wider attempt by allies of former President Donald Trump to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Key points from the summary of this article include, number one, software breaches. The breaches impacted voting equipment from two major companies, accounting for over 70% of votes cast in the country. The group warns that these breaches have urgent implications for the security of the 2024 election and beyond. Two, potential criminal conspiracy. The letter describes the multi-state effort to unlawfully obtain copies of a voting system software as a serious threat to both election and national security, potentially consult, uh, consti constituting a significant criminal conspiracy. Number three, organizers of the letter. The initiative was led by Free Speech for People, a left-leaning nonprofit focused on election and campaign finance reforms. This group has also sought to ban Trump from the 2024 ballot under the 14th Amendment's insurrection clause. Number four, response from federal agencies. The FBI, Justice Department and the Office of Special Counsel Jack Smith have declined to comment and the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency has not yet responded. Number five, context of the breaches. The efforts to access voting systems began after the 2020 presidential election. Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump, among others, were charged in Fulton County, Georgia, in connection with a conspiracy to overturn Trump's loss in the state, including unauthorized breaches of voting systems. Number six, broader impacts and risks. Now, the breaches have implications beyond the local election offices where they occurred, affecting software used nationwide. Possession of this software could enable malicious actors to meddle in the 2024 election, identify vulnerabilities, or fabricate evidence of stolen votes. Number seven, federal investigation status. While there has been involvement in some cases like the Colorado breach, the extent of federal investigations remains unclear. Number eight, need for a federal probe. The signatories, including experts like w Douglas W. Jones and Kevin Scogland, emphasized the necessity of a federal investigation to address the risks posed by these breaches and prevent the distribution of stolen election software. Would you like my opinion? Because I'm going to give it to you anyway. So um, not even based fully on this, but kind of sort of based on what we just talked about here with them worrying about the um, election uh, electronic fraud possibilities, right? And things like that. You also have to look at all the things that are going on right now in the country and how it feels like we're about to be pushed again to stay inside or to separate from people or to do things from home, work from, like, it feels like we're, we're, we're reliving 2020 right now because of course there's an election coming up. I feel like this is going to be more of a push for mail-in ballots only, which I don't trust either because anything can be done to those ballots once they leave your home. Mail-in ballots seems like the easiest way to commit voter fraud, in my opinion. What do I know? I'm just some chick with a camera and a microphone, but I feel like that's what the push is going to be. With this going on, with them saying, well, we don't trust the electronics, they're going to say, well, okay, well, if you don't trust the electronics, then we'll just do it old school before technology put its little nose in there. We'll just do it the old way and you can fill out a ballot and send it in just right in your mailbox. Keep the United States Postal Service trucking along and keep them in business, right? I can guarantee you, you're going to see more and more push for you to just mail in your ballot from home for the 2024 presidential election. Now, according to Newsweek, uh, Newsweek this is what they're reporting. Migrants given $5,000 gift cards after crossing the border, according to Arizona Sheriff, right? The article begins by saying, an Arizona Sheriff who moonlights as a Republican candidate for a U.S. Senate has claimed 
that undocumented migrants are being given $5,000 gift cards after illegally crossing the southern border. Um, I don't know if it's Pinal or Pinal. I don't think it's Penal because that sounds wrong. P-I-N-A-L. I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. Um, Pinal. Pine, pinal, pinal, penal, pinal. <laughs> I don't know. Pinal <laughs> County Mar uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb made the claim this week in a video shared to his Senate campaign account on X, formerly Twitter. Lamb said that our government was handing the migrants gift cards, cell phones, and airline tickets to any domestic destination after entering the country. This is the quote. When these folks come across in their process, they're being given a cell phone, a plane ticket to anywhere they want to go in this country, so probably to a community near you, and a $5,000 visa card, Lamb says in the video. So while this Christmas season you're struggling to keep your lights on, while you're struggling to pay your rent, put Christmas presents under the tree for your kids, we have our government giving people who came into this country illegally $5,000 gift cards, he added. That's the truth, folks. Now, furthermore, Newsweek went on to say Lamb heard about the supposed gift card exchange from close sources at the border, telling the outlet that he was absolutely in shock when these agents came forward with the news. Now, I personally am not going to say that that is a true thing because I have not seen it with my own eyes. And technically, neither has uh, Mr. Lamb. He did not see it with his own eyes either. He's playing grapevine or telephone or whatever you want to call it. Somebody said this, who then said that, and then repeated it over here, and then it got over here. And now we have this video from uh, Mark, uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb making these claims that I cannot say for a fact are true. Do I put it past our government? Oh, hell no. I do not. Not in the least. No, not whatsoever. But I cannot state for a fact that it is true because I have not seen it with my own eyes. I have not seen, I won't try, I don't trust videos that you can see because anybody can Photoshop or AI edit any of these things these days. So unless I'm seeing this with my own eyes, it's hard for me to, to, to 100% believe it. And the only reason I say that is when they say they are given a uh, plane ticket to anywhere they want to go. Have you been to the airport lately? It is harder to get through the airport than it is to, I don't know, obtain a handgun. Like it is very difficult to get to the airport these days. You got to show them all kinds of stuff. They almost basically want to take your blood, pee in a cup and whatever else. I, I, that part I find a little harder to, to buy that they were just given a plane ticket to anywhere they wanted to go. The, the cell phone. Sure. I mean, there's plenty of burner phones out there and, you know, cheap data, whatever else. And the gift cards possibly because what better way for our country to ensure that money is going back into our country than to give them money from our country. It's really stupid, but it actually makes sense to me. So that's where I'm going to go with that one. That's all I'm going to say on that whole story there. Now, thank you guys for watching, liking, and subscribing. I do appreciate you all immensely. Thank you for showing your support over on Buy Me A Coffee. Um, a few of you yesterday, you know exactly who you are. I appreciate you. A big shout out to the members on Patreon. Member names have been updated, by the way, so go check out the, the description after this is done, and you'll see your name in the description. Now, next up, SAG AFTRA. I think that's how you're supposed to say it, SAG-AFTRA, hit with over 100 COVID vaccine mandate suits um, by members. Claims are without merit, the Guild says. This one begins by stating, Hollywood's vaccine mandates are gone, but as new legal actions filed today against SAG-AFTRA make clear, the battle over the C-19 protection is far from over. Over 100 individual suits placed in the L.A. Superior Court docket on Thursday claim the Guild threw members under corporate buses during the height of the pandemic, essentially linking arms with the studios to require vaccinations to work. Now, I know YouTube doesn't like uh, when I talk about this topic and I don't want to risk misaligning with Neil and his ties and connections to the WHO, the World Health Organization. So go over to Patreon, get the entire story, my full thoughts and opinions, sans the whole self-censorship and restricted freedom of speech found over here. I hate to do it. You guys know I hate to do it. But if I want to keep the channel so we can have these conversations, I have to get as close to the line as I can without fully, fully stepping over it on certain topics. And that one being the health related ones. You've seen the channels that they're just like plucking them out and tossing them away, demonetizing them, doing all kinds of stuff. We, you know, exactly the channels that I'm talking about. So I do not want to fall into their basket of people who got screwed over by the out by the 
the platform. So just FYI. Now this one, y'all will love this. Hunter Biden is indicted on nine tax charges, adding to gun charges in a special counsel investigation. So can someone please explain to me on how as a country, his father can maintain his current role and position as president, let alone run for president in 2024 and possibly be allowed to be reelected just solely based on the actions, lies, cover-ups, conspiracy, and corruption all tied to his degenerate son. Uh, you guys can answer that in the comments. I know you're probably yelling it at the, the screen or whatever you're watching right now. And I want to pretend like I hear you, but if you put it in the comments, I'll definitely get it. So Yahoo News and AP Associated Press are saying that Hunter Biden, President Joe Biden's son, faces nine tax charges in California as part of an intensifying special counsel investigation against the backdrop of the 2024 election. Here are the key points that you guys need to know. Number one, new charges. The charges filed in California where Hunter Biden resides include three felonies and six misdemeanors. There are in addition to, no, these are in addition to federal firearms charges in Delaware, which allege that he illegally possessed guns as a drug user in 2018. When that spatial number two, alleged tax evasion. Special counsel David Weiss stated that Hunter Biden spent millions on a lavish lifestyle instead of paying his tax bills. The charges relate to at least $1.4 million in taxes owed between 2016 and 2019, a period during which Hunter Biden has admitted to struggling with addiction. These back taxes have since been paid. Well, that's nice. Didn't Wesley Snipes also, didn't he like legitimately go to jail for tax evasion? I'm sure other people have, but I remember Wesley Snipes going to jail for tax evasion. Now, number three, potential prison sentence. I didn't mean to smile. I'm sorry. It was just accidental. If convicted on these charges, Hunter Biden, aged 53, could face up to 17 years in prison. The special counsel probe remains ongoing. Is it not the most ridiculous thing in the world that we have a president who is 81 years old and we're talking about his degenerate 53 year old son. Like every time they bring up Hunter, my brain wants to go, well, he's a teenager. They're going to make stupid decisions. No, he has a grown ass man doing dumb ass things. Like, are you serious? Anyway, sorry. Where, where was I now for defense's response, Hunter Biden's defense attorney, Abby Lowell accused the prosecutor of succumbing to Republican pressure, claiming that the charges would not have been brought if Hunter's last name were different you do realize that even if Hunter's last name were different and he was still doing all these things, charges would still be filed. Just it wouldn't be in headline news because nobody would know who he was. He happens to be known. So his name is in headline news. Maybe if you don't want your name to be in headline news because people know who you are, don't do dumbass things. Right? I mean, it feels pretty simple and self-explanatory to me, but what do I know? Um, Number five, White House stance. The White House declined to comment, mm, surprise, on the indictment di directing inquiries to the Justice Department or Hunter Biden's representatives. I'm sure they are tired of all the phone calls they've been getting. Number six, details of spending. The indictment details Hunter Biden's spending on various items, including drugs, strippers, gotta have strippers, obviously, luxury hotels and exotic cars, but not his taxes. Huh. Uh, priorities a little skewed over there, sir. Number seven, related political actions. Congressional Republicans are pursuing an impeachment inquiry against President Biden, alleging involvement in an influence peddling scheme with his son. However, no evidence has emerged so far to suggest Joe Biden abused his role or accepted bribes. Number eight, collapsed plea deal. Initially, a plea deal was in place that would have resulted in two years probation. For Hunter Biden on misdemeanor tax charges, avoiding prosecution on the gun charge. This deal was later abandoned. We call that just a slap on the wrist for doing really dumb shit. Just FYI. Number nine, criticism and comparison. Republicans, including former President Donald Trump, criticized the initial plea deal as overly lenient. Trump himself faces separate uh, criminal cases. 10, IRS investigators input. IRS investigators testified before Congress alleging mishandling of the investigation into uh, Hunter Biden by the Justice Department, which the justice officials have, uh, of course, denied. Number 11, defense strategy. Hunter Biden's defense plans to challenge the new charges and push for the dismissal of the gun charges, citing immunity provisions from the original plea deal and questioning their constitutionality. Number 12, Hunter Biden's income and tax filing. Between 2016 and 2020, Hunter Biden's income totaled approximately 7 
million dollars, including roles with Burisma, a Chinese private equity fund and a law firm. He filed his taxes in 2020 with back taxes paid by a third party. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? That your back taxes are paid by a third party. Was that third party Chinese by any chance? Just out of curiosity. Listen, if your name is in headlines this often and in you know judges mouths and in court dockets this often there's probably some truth to something that is happening here sure it's possible that something is um fabricated or something is embellished or whatever else but all of this literally all of it <laughs> no no my dude i can guarantee you something in here is probably you know like when you're cooking noodles and the old thing was to know if it's real or if it's not real but also probably that these days with food who knows but to know if it's done you take a noodle out and you throw it at the wall and if it sticks you're good to go and if it doesn't it needs to cook a little bit longer one how many people out there were throwing noodles at walls i did it when i was younger it's not good for your paint just fyi um but also if it sticks, then, you know, it's done. Something here is probably going to stick. And then guess what? Hunter Biden's done. And you know what else after that? His daddy's done. His daddy will be done too. So that's, that's just my thought on that. Now, Squirrel Tribe, I appreciate y'all letting me have this little fun moment with you to go over and hash this stuff out over here. It's been enjoyable for me. Hopefully it has been for you as well. Please feel free to leave your comments in the comment section, obviously. And if you guys want to support over on Patreon, there's a link in the description. If not, no harm, no foul. Contemplate liking the video. Contemplate subscribing again. It's up to you. No pressure. Um, but I love you all immensely. It is Friday my dudes. So hopefully you have something planned for the weekend with the family or friends or even by yourself. If you need some just recharge time, hopefully you're going to have a enjoyable weekend. I'll still be here Saturday and Sunday. If you want to check it out, if not, then I'll see you on Monday. I love you all. Bye.